Hare Krishna. Oh, welcome you all on 90 episode book reading challenge. And today we are going to read episode 13 and 14. Om Jnana Timirandasa Jnananjana Salakya Chakshur Unmilitam Yuna Tashma Shri Gurve Namaha. So yesterday we ended with uh, a nice pastime where Krishna killed a demon called as Agasur. And that has been known to all the Brajavasis after a one year. And now today we will read why that took one year for everyone to know that pastime. It's a very nice pastime as well. It's called as Brahma Vilochan or stealing of boys and calves by Brahma. So Lord Brahma got bewildered by the activities of Krishna. So he thought, let me test him. Is it Krishna or someone else? So he actually took away the calves and boys and hide it in Brahma Loka. Let's see. So chapter 13, the stealing of the boys and calves by Brahma. This chapter describes Lord Brahma's attempt to take away the calves and cowherd boys. And it also describes the bewilderment of Lord Brahma and finally the clearance of his illusion. Although the incidents concerning Agasura mm. had been performed one year before, when the cowherd boys were five years old, when they were six years old, they said it happened today. What happened was this. After killing Agasur, Krishna along with his associate and the cowherd boys went for a picnic within the forest. The calves, being allured by the green grasses gradually went far away and therefore Krishna associates become a little agitated and wanted to bring back the calves. Krishna however encouraged the boys by saying, you take your tiffin without being agitated, I shall go and find the calves. And thus the Lord departed. Then just to examine the potency of Krishna, Lord Brahma took away all the calves and cowherd boys and kept them in a secluded place. When Krishna was unable to find the calves and boys, he could understand that this was a trick performed by Brahma. Then the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes, in order to please Lord Brahma, as well as his own associates and their mothers, expanded himself to become the calves and boys exactly as they were before. In this way, he discovered another pastime. A special feature of his pastime was that mothers of the coward boys thus because more attached to their respective sons and the cows become more attached to their calves. After nearly a year, Baladeva observed that all the coward boys and the calves were expansion of Krishna. Thus he inquired from Krishna and was informed of what had happened. So here we see, like by seeing the past times of Krishna, Brahma got bewildered. And Lord Brahma hide everyone in a secluded place. And then Krishna expanded himself in as many cowherds and as many cows. So this again provides an uh, potency of Krishna that he can expand as he wishes and into n numbers as well. When one full year had passed, Brahma returned and saw that Krishna was still engaged as usual with his friends and the calves and cows. Then Krishna exhibited all the calves and coward boys as four armed forms of Narayana. And Brahma could then understood that Krishna's potency and he was astonished by the pastime of Krishna. His worshipable Lord, Krishna, however, bestowed his causeless mercy upon Brahma and released him from illusion. Thus, Brahma began to offer prayers to the glory, to glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So now, the illusion of Brahma has been released by Lord Krishna. And now, Brahma is going to glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this is how we end episode 13. And we are going to chapter number 14, and that is the prayers made by Brahma to Lord Krishna. Or prayers offered by Brahma to Lord Krishna. This chapter describes the prayer Brahma offered to Lord Krishna, who is also known as Nandanandana. For his satisfaction, Brahma first prayed the beauty of Lord's transcendental limbs and then declared that his original identity of sweetness 
is even more difficult to comprehend than his opulences. Only by the devotional process of hearing and chanting transcendental sound vibrations received from the Vedic authorities can one realize the personality of Godhead. It is, the fruitless to, it is fruitless to try to realize God through process outside the scope of Vedic authority. So, here we understand that by chanting the holy name of Krishna, which is given from the Vedic authorities, we can realize who personality of Godhead he is. The mystery of the personality of Godhead, who is the reservoir of unlimited spiritual qualities, is inconceivable. It is even more difficult to understand than the impersonal supreme. Thus, only by the mercy of God can one understand his glories. Finally, realizing this, Brahma repeatedly condemned his own actions and recognized that Lord Sri Krishna, the ultimate center of the universe, is Brahma's own father, the original Narayan. In this way, Brahma begged the Lord's forgiveness. Brahma then glorified the inconceivable opulences of the personality of Godhead and described the ways in which Brahma and Shiva differ from Lord Vishnu. The reason for the Supreme Lord's appearance in various species of demigods, animals and so on, the eternal nature of the pastimes of the personality of Godhead and the temporarily of the material world. By knowing the Supreme Personality in truth, the individual spirit soul can achieve liberation from bondage. In actuality, however, both liberation and bondage are only unreal. For it is only for the living entity's conditions outlook that his bondage and liberation are produced. Thinking the personal form of Lord Krishna's illusory, fools reject his lo lotus feet and look elsewhere to find the Supreme Self. But the futility of their search is the obvious proof of their foolishness. There is simply no way to understand the truth of the Personality of Godhead without His mercy. So that's how we understand that we need mercy. Even in our last session we understood that while Mother Yashoda was binding Lord Krishna, then also we see that two finger sword is one is endeavor and second is his mercy. So here Brahma is saying the same thing as well. To know Krishna, to understand the Krishna, we need his mercy. Without his mercy, it's not possible to understand him. Having established this conclusion, Lord Brahma analyzed the great good fortune of the residents of Braja and then personally prayed to be born there even as a blade of grass, a bush or a creeper. Indeed, the homes of the residents of Vrindavana are not prisons of material existence, but rather abodes invaded even by the jnanis and yogis. On the other hand, any home without a connection to Lord Krishna is in fact a prison cell of material existence. Finally, Brahma offered his whole self at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord and praising him again and again circumambulated him and took his leave. Lord Krishna then gathered the animals Brahma stole and led them to the place on the Yamuna's bank where the cowherd boys had been taking lunch. The same friends who had been present before were sitting there now. By the power of Krishna's illusory energy, they were not, al not at all aware of what had happened. Thus, when Krishna arrived with the calves, the boys told him, you have returned so quickly, very good. As long as you were gone, we could not take even a morsel of food. So come and eat. Laughing at the words of the coward boys, Lord Krishna began talking, taking his meal in their company. While eating, Krishna pointed out to his young friends the skin of the pythons, and the boys thought Krishna had just now killed this terrible snake. Indeed, Later, they related to the resident of Vrindavana these incidents of killing Agashur demon. In this way, the coward boys described the pastime of Lord Krishna that had happened in Balya age, or Balya age means uh, age of one to five. And even though his Pongud age, that six to ten, had begun. 
So Sukadev Goswami concludes this chapter by explaining how the gopis loved Lord Krishna even more than they loved their own son. So in one year of time, when Krishna expanded himself as a covered boys and cups, all the gopis, the mothers who were there, they were actually had desire to serve Krishna and they all have served Krishna for whole one year. Unknowingly, they didn't know that, okay, this is my child, but actually they were serving to Krishna for whole one year. And as, as says the Brahma says, a very nice verse in this chapter. It says, Aho Bhagyam, Aho Bhagyam, Nanda Gopa Brajavukasam, En Mitran Paramananda Purna Brahma Sanatana. He says that, oh, what a fortunate, what fortune this uh, Gopa Gana has, the coward boys and Nanda Maharaj has. How the Krishna, being Supreme Personality of Godhead, became their friend and playing with them. So that is how we end chapter 14 today, episode 14, day number 7. Thank you for being with me. If you have any questions, you can write down on the comment box. I'll try to answer you next uh, day. And uh, please like, share and subscribe the channel. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai.